Hey everybody, Sandy Payne here at Fort Hood, Texas, and I am so excited to bring you a very special guest. I have Mariana Bridges here today. She is at Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia, which is super cool. And, and I, I am so excited to introduce you to her because not only is she a realtor in the area, but she's actively like in the active duty role with her husband as a military spouse. And we have some really fun things we're gonna talk about. So welcome, Mariana. Thank you for visiting. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really glad to be here and hope I can share you some good information today. Wonderful. So tell me a little bit about you because obviously from your accent, you are from Brazil. Um, so tell me about you and kind of your life as a military spouse and what that looks like just kind of like right now so we can get to know who you are. Okay, so I'm born and raised in Brazil. I came to the U.S. in 2012 through an exchange uh, program, and I met my husband. We've been married for seven years. We don't have any kids, but we do have three dogs. My husband's active duty with the Navy, still has a few years to go before he retires, and we're currently living in Stafford, the part of Northern Virginia area. And we did PCF overseas. So that's basically a little bit about me. Yes, wonderful. Well, you actually cover Northern Virginia. So that's Alexandria, Arlington Falls Church, Reston, Springfield, Fairfax, Woodbridge, Stafford, mm -hmm. Fredericksburg. And that is Quantico, Fort Belvoir, and Fort Myer and the Pentagon. So what does that area look like? Because that is a lot of coverage. And but what I know about DC is it's kind of tight. Right. So what, what does that look yeah. like from like an aerial footprint around the Pentagon, like around the base? What give me a little layout of what that looks like? Yeah. If you live and work in the area, you probably visit all these areas that you just mentioned. Okay. Currently we live in Stepper, but my husband works by DC. So he commutes every day to DC. It takes him about one hour if he's lucky to get there, one hour to get back. It depends on uh, the rush hour traffic. Mm. So in this area, you pretty much have everything to do. If you're laid back, you have a lot of options. If you like a more active lifestyle, we have tons mm -hmm. of options. For example, from with Stafford to get to DC, if you're feeling like you know, visiting museums, there are a lot of free museums in DC, is about 45 minutes. And uh, we just had the cherry blossom uh, a yeah. few weeks ago. It is absolutely beautiful if you had a chance it, it's worth it it's gorgeous we try to go every year and I never get tired of it there's oh, all wow. the monuments and everything so you have everything you want to do you're probably going to find in this area and if you wanted to travel a little outside the area you're going to find beaches uh mountains you had the Shenandoah Valley about three hours more or less from here mm -hmm. so if you're into hiking there's some breathtaking spots especially during fall it's worth it wow that just sounds beautiful I mean I have we have a few cherry blossom trees every so often here in Texas and they are just breast I mean they're just beautiful especially when the leaves all start to you know just it's like it's snowing sometimes <laughs> um so yeah I've been I've had a couple experiences in the in the DC area we were never stationed there but I have visited friends and I know um they also have kind of like a commuter train um system if I'm mistaken is that is that something that is a lot of military families do or a lot of soldiers do to get around or do you find it best to have you know a, a fuel efficient car that is an option. Actually, we have a station here in Quantico that takes you all the way to DC and all the areas. So we have that option. Mm -hmm. But from what I talk to people, they rather commute using a car. We have the express lanes that is option, but that can get costly very okay. quick. Mm -hmm. So it whoever lives in the area, they have to pick between space and living farther, mm -hmm. paying less, but dealing with traffic. Gotcha. Or living closer to work, paying sometimes way more tiny space, but a little less traffic. Yeah, that's it's more like a preference. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting because here at Fort Hood, I mean, we don't really have traffic. I mean, the only traffic is just getting, you know, the line you're in, getting onto base at certain times of day. But from an overall like 
we're not really a metro area. We're about an hour um, north of Austin. So most most of our military members don't live in Austin. You know, you know they're going to live right around uh, the Fort Hood base. But that's a, that's very interesting. So there's a sacrifice there. So you have to decide: do you want, you know, convenience <laughs> or mm-hmm. or space? Yeah, really. And I guess yeah. that has a lot to do with like your position. I know like some people moving there, like they have to be a little bit more on call or a little bit closer, you know, to base, they may not be able to respond in an hour. Right. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And depending on what position you're in, you mentioned about like, just if you want to start building your path to your dream home, you know, you talked about flexibility and you talked about focus and kind of balancing your needs and your wants. Like, tell me a little bit about that thought process. I, I love that because a lot of times, you know, our military families are PCSing quick. They don't have a lot of time um, to make a decision. And so I love that you talk about that because I I think that's crucial in aiding you as a realtor to help them narrow down, you know, and and find that. So tell me what that looks like from like a buyer perspective when you're talking to them about that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my family's experience and the area, what we see a lot in this area. We have base installations, government jobs all over the area. It's a lot in this area. So people are always moving in or moving out of the area, like all the time. So if you're a buyer, considering today's market, you have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Not being flexible is not an option. It's a fact. Um, we, we've been seeing that for a few years now, and if you want to start building equity mm. to get to your dream home, you might have to be open-minded and be way more flexible than we would like to. Mm-hmm. Okay. So people that I experienced that, and I've talked to a few colleagues that have been experiencing the same things, people that are thinking about buying in the beginning of this year, they're not long in, uh, like I can say, can afford what they had in mind in the beginning of the year right now. Right, right. So basically they're renewing their rentals, their lease, because they can no longer afford because the interest rates are going up mm-hmm. and everything is so up because of inflation, everything that's going on uh, everywhere. So mm-hmm. they're out of the market for now. So I lost a few clients, not lost, but they put a hold, say, okay, we, we're going to, renew our lease right now because we can't afford what we need. And that's totally understandable. I don't push anything to anyone. I sit with every single client. I analyze, see what their needs are because sometimes really uh, buying at that moment at that time is not the best thing for them. I don't want anybody going through a financial hardship to Mm -hmm. buy a property, Mm -hmm. okay? So in this area, if you want to buy something Maybe buy the house that's been sitting in the market for a little longer. Maybe it's not perfect if right. it's reasonable, if it needs a little more repairs. But if you have the funds to do the, those repairs, maybe it might end up being a good deal. So mm-hmm. it's, it, it depends a lot on each situation. Or maybe you want a single family home with three bedrooms, but you don't have kids and it's just you and your husband, your spouse. Maybe what about a townhouse? What about an apartment? Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be a better investment for you right now. And then in a few years, if you decide you can either rent it out or you can sell and use the profits to get to your dream home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that because so often, you know, we, we experience, you know, we see, you know, people kind of just pushing, you know, they, they want, they want to get people in the home to close the deal, you know, but taking Mm -hmm. that time to really, um, do what's best for our buyers, you know, and even our sellers, you know, when we, when we talk about, you know, people selling and trying to get out of there and, you know, really making sure it's a fair offer and, you know, outlining, you know, all of the terms of the contracts and making sure that we present, cause that's our job, right. Is to present yeah. mm-hmm. all the scenarios, you know, the pros, the cons, you know, sometimes we have to be the soundboard and people get kind of excited. We have to say, I, I love your excitement, but let's, dial it back, you know, let's talk about these circumstances and, you know, kind of make a really educated decision. And like you said, sometimes that means buying is not going to be the right move for them. And that's commendable to be able to 
have that relationship with your client to be able to be comfortable enough to say that because really in the end it's about the, doing the best thing for them because the last thing we want you know we don't want to push them in a situation well now they're struggling now they have to sell they're upside down in their equity you know and at the end of the day they're gonna be like well you're the you're the one who told me to buy it you yeah. know so we <laughs> don't want that you know years down the line what we want is that like that being that good resource that having that moral compass and that truth and equity piece you know um you know with our um clients you know i think that's the best way to serve them and and i love hearing that now i want to talk about some pcs tips because i haven't moved in years with the military we did seven moves 23 years, three of them over to Germany. We stayed over there for seven years. Um, so things have changed, I think, but I think there's also some core things that it doesn't matter when you PCS, like there's just tips, right? That's just gonna help everybody. Mm -hmm. And then maybe there's some new, new age, <laughs> more um, fun ideas or tips that maybe I didn't get a chance to learn. So let's talk about like, what would you recommend just in general, no matter where anybody's moving, just on a PCS in general conversation, what would be some of the recommendations or tips that you you feel people should kind of start thinking of as soon as, you know, obviously it's inevitable they're gonna move, but maybe once they get orders or once they know they're getting ready to go somewhere, do you have any words of wisdom? Yes, I think first of all, you're gonna have a mix of feelings. So mm -hmm. allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. It's normal. If I tell you the number of times I cried, so it's normal, you're gonna feel excitement, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel afraid, you're gonna feel overwhelmed, you're gonna feel stressed. Just allow yourself to feel what you're feeling, it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing, if you need help, ask for help. There's no shaming asking for help. Right. Sometimes people see, asking for help as a weakness, but it, it's not. It's you being a human being and you can only take so much. Yeah. So if you need help, if you feel you need help, ask for help. Yeah, because we've all been there and who better to help um, is another military family, you know, your neighbors who are experiencing it, friends you've made while you're there, a realtor who's been been there also and done that, you know, I agree with that. I love that statement. Don't be afraid to ask for help because that's that's really how we, you know, you're going to get through, honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll be surprised sometimes we think oh, I'm going to ask for help, but I'm inconveniencing somebody. Mm -hmm. But you'll be surprised because people like helping. Yes. So it is something that's in our minds, right. not in somebody's mind. Right, right. I love that. Mm -hmm. And preparations. You say start preparing as soon as possible. Ah! <laughs> yes. Talk, because talk we... a little about that. I love that. <laughs> I'm like, yes, as soon as possible. That like, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time my husband and I think we have way less stuff than we actually do. Yeah. So I say that from experience. As soon as you have your orders, you know where you're going, start packing a little thing here and there. Mm -hmm. What we found that works best for us after a few mistakes is focusing one room at a time instead of sharing the, the tasks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We used to say, okay, I'm going to take care of the master bedroom and you take care of the kitchen. End up as a mess, mm -hmm. end up with both of us stressed, yeah. end up with us arguing over yeah. the smallest things. So last time we visited overseas, but still there are things you have to pack. So what we did was we said, okay, let's start one room at a time and let's focus in one task at a time. Right. Ideally, that would be good if you could do it together, but we know most of the time because of everybody's schedule that might not help. So right. what I suggest is mm -hmm. put a timeline and tasks for the both of you, even if you do separately, but focus on one thing at a time, one task at a time. For example, start with your bedroom, check your closet. Okay, what clothes can you get rid of? What you don't want anymore? Make piles of clothes you want to keep, want to donate, what you want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And then once you're done with that, once both of them, both of you are done with that, 
why I say both of you, because then you don't know what your husband likes, uh, what, what he wants to keep, what he wants to get rid of. Maybe he liked something last week and he doesn't like anymore and don't, right. don't want to keep. So <laughs> you don't want to throw his stuff away and vice versa. So once you're done with that task, then you move to the next one. Mm -hmm. Doing that way worked really good for us. We were less stressed. We still stressed, but less. Mm. And you, it's way more organized than when you're like separate things. You do one room, I do the other room, end up at a, at a, like a big mess every single time. Yeah. So doing one thing at a time yeah. is a big difference. And I, and I love kind of the time blocking because, you know, that's, I mean, we have to do that in life in general. Like you're, mm -hmm. I think a mistake people make is, you know, feeling like they just, it's just, it becomes this 24 seven task. And they never stop, like they never stop thinking or never, they kind of get like obsessed with the fact of getting organized and getting ready. But with that, you kind of forsake every, <laughs> forsake everything else and can actually add a lot of stress to your family. Because if you're always, you know, if you're always there to play with your kids and now you're like, I can't, mommy can't, mommy can't, because I have to do, get ready. You know, that's just going to add stress onto them. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I found too. I love that you say that is, you know, I would say, okay, I'm going to work on this. And this is the time I'm going to maybe while they're in school if, or, or whatever. Um, and that's it. I'm going to work on it. And then I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to go back to life. And then I'm going to block another bit of time where it can consume you. I mean, really? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Don't try. Yeah. Don't try to do too much at the same time because you're just going to overwhelm yourself and everybody around you is going to feel it, and you're going to feel it and you're right. going to get tired and you're going to get super irritated over everything. Yeah, I'm sorry right. because I experienced gonna, that. Yeah, there'll be like this whole ripple effect for the whole family. And the next thing you know, you're just, you're all angry and just can't wait for the move to be over instead of making it just part of our life, part of the lifestyle. And it can be enjoyable really, you know, it's a, mm -hmm. a change of surroundings. You know, I would say PCS, permanent change of station, but I'm like, it's a positive change of surroundings. Like just start thinking of all the new adventures and new things you're going to have, you know, experience. And I think the mindset in the whole process is going to play a really, if you're like, oh my gosh, we have to move. I got to pack all this stuff. Like if you're just weigh yourself down with it and put like a negativity on over it, then I mm -hmm. think that kind of trickles through the whole experience rather than like, oh my gosh, okay, time to get reorganized. Like we're going to a new place and we've got new things to, you know, look forward to like right there in five seconds, you can totally switch the whole scenario of the dynamic, you know? Um, one thing I love that you mentioned because we haven't, this was something that I didn't have when we were moving. You talk about joining social media groups at your next duty station. We were like dial up AOL chat room. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we didn't have that. And how has that made your moves better or more prepared or just, you know, what, what did that, how does that help you in a move? I never got to experience that. For us as realtors, you have to be neutral when it comes to neighborhoods. But mm -hmm. if you want to find out more about certain neighborhoods or certain areas about uh, crime mm -hmm. and stuff, we have resources. But when you join these groups, you can find so much stuff like yeah. schools. Yeah. What we see in the internet might not be what people are experiencing. Sure. Because what I came to find out when people ask me about schools, I always refer them to the resources I have. I don't have kids and I tell them, look, what I came to find out is if you join groups in this neighborhood, ask the parents how their kids are doing that school. What is their experience in that school? What's the good, what's the bad? That's and that's, that's helpful. That's helpful. Instead of just going and on the internet and okay, how, right. what is the school like? And maybe that's not accurate anymore. Maybe it's old information. So I think the best way to find out stuff for a neighborhood or an, anything, talk to people from the neighborhoods you like to live. You can envision yourself living and join these groups. Not always, they're not always the best. Of course, there are trolls everywhere. 
but yeah. they can be very I'm helpful neighborhood too. Groups, they can all be a source. <laughs> <laughs> I just think so. I'm like, okay, anything good going on in this neighborhood? <laughs> so you have to, you know, tread lightly and trust lightly, you know, what you hear. But I love that as a resource. Um, mm -hmm. I know for me as a realtor, you know, a lot of times you can't really get into some of those groups if you don't live there. Um, but there are times yeah. that you just can't market there, right? Like I know for me, like I can look, but I can't be like, oh, I'm your local realtor. Can't really solicit. Mm -hmm. But it is a really great yeah. to kind of see what are the needs of the community. There was this one group that I was in and someone was talking about solar panels. You know, hey, we're thinking of solar panels. Has anybody had them? What is your advice? And I thought, ah, my gosh, I need to talk on this topic. So I quick did a video on one of my like Instagram sit down with Sam, like things that I do for real estate. And I did a video on solar panels real quick. And then I was able to upload it and put it on YouTube and say, hey, great question. I actually have a video about that as a local realtor, check it out. And I linked my YouTube video. So I was helping the resource. They knew I was a realtor, but I wasn't in there like, you know, buy with me, sell with me. So it's also a great space for realtors to, to start to learn too. Like we, like mm -hmm. you said, like we have our housing rules that we have to follow as far as fair housing and what we can say and what we can't say, but it is a good space to kind of get the vibe. So just so that we know personally, mm -hmm. like if we have a family coming in, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're, they're going to want kids running around the streets. Like that's what they look for. Then I can know that that might be an area to, you know, pay attention to, or make sure that we, you know, do a neighborhood tour or something to just introduce them to that space you know, staying within the guidelines. So you have three dogs. We've, we moved to Germany with a, a cat at the time, the whole quarantine thing. I mean, do we still, is that still a thing when you move, especially overseas, um, when you're moving with pets, you have some experience in that. So what could, what could you advise people that are moving PCSing with pets? Um, just kind of some things they might not be thinking about. Yeah, so each place is different. You're gonna have to check the requirements for the place you're moving to. So we PCS to the Middle East. What happened to us, we went with two dogs, came back with three. So what happened with the preparation? So we took them as soon as we knew, because my husband actually went first. And then I, have, I was having some issues, like serious issues in the place we're at. And then, I was add to his orders and then I went afterwards with the dogs. Mm -hmm. So he was already there. So he gathered all the information about vaccines. Uh, mm -hmm. I took the dogs to the vet to take the vaccines they were going to need. So we did that in advance. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to research quarantine if they're going to have quarantine types of vaccines, microchip if it's in compliance with the place you're going, check if your information is updated mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be flying amc or you're going to be flying commercial what's going to happen are you going to be flying during summer or during winter because depending on the temperature mm -hmm. they're not going to allow your pets to fly right do you have a plan b a plan c i always like to have three plans because b fails as you have c so if your pet suddenly you got to the airport and the temperature changed i don't know climate is crazy nowadays. Uh, do you have a plan B? Maybe check hotels in the area they allow pets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're not desperate in this last second. Okay, I'm in the airport, but my pet cannot fly. What I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. So do you have the plan? Uh, check uh, if the crates are the ATA crates, if they're allowed, because there are some specifications about size, weight, and everything. Uh, also check the breed of your pet if it's allowed in the, the country you're going to you're moving to mm. so there's a list of things you have to check right so you can always ask your vet veterinarian uh what vaccines are re required so after you do all the stuff you have to do to get your pets ready to to fly we had to take them back to the vet within 10 days from departure because the veterinary has to say okay they're good to go, they're healthy, and they're gonna give you a certificate, a pet health mm -hmm. certificate, I think is how it's called, saying, okay, this is what you're gonna present uh, during the trip. Because some places require that, 
and it has to be within a window. In our case, was was within ten days from departure. Gotcha. And if you miss that window, you have to do it again, and things might get delayed. So think about out of pocket expenses too. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you get over all of these stages, as soon as you get to the next place, you start saving. Right. Even if even if it's twenty five dollars a month. Put it aside and forget you have it because in, in the end, when you're ready to go back home or to your next place, you have a little money aside because you're going to have out-of-pocket expenses. Yeah. You're yeah. always going <laughs> to. Yeah. And that's something, I think that's for everything, right? I mean, even just moving and mm -hmm. decorating and furniture that doesn't fit. Now you need more. Now you've got kids and you like that constant, I, I always enjoyed the fact that I knew I was going to move because it was going to force me to like clean out <laughs> and not like start hoarding things, but I, you have, you have so many good tips and the ones about the pets. Yeah. I mean, you can't research enough and, you know, again, like it's never too late or it's never too soon to get in touch with a good, um, local resource, like a realtor, even if you're going to live on post, honestly, we're, I mean, and I, I you're clearly an incredible, incredible resource there. Even if they're, if someone's going to live on post or someone's going to rent and maybe you don't do rentals. Like I think our job mm -hmm. is to kind of be all, all knowing, you know, kind of that, that person that people can turn to and just being kind and being that resource and making sure people have the tools that they need to have a good PCS experience. I think even if they don't use us as a realtor, you know, it, it pays the self forward, right? I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, it, it, it all works. If we're true to making sure we're providing our community and our clients with as much information and experience, you know, that we have, I think that's our job really. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end, exactly. I mean, I, we're all the reality. I love your little reality statement. Like you're always moving, start setting aside things, you know, by the time you have time to move, just when you think like, for me, it's like, just when you think you're like, oh, we're done, we're unpacked. <laughs> and you're just like, whoop, time to do it all again. I think you're always in like yes. this constant state of either coming or going. Um, but getting down some of these practices and getting, um, just just doing it over and over, I think it just gives you more time to have that settle, right? That moment of settle. Um, and sometimes you're lucky to be somewhere for more than you know, two or three years and others. I mean, I think our shortest duty station was like 10 months. And I, and I remember being like, oh my gosh, do I even unpack? Do I, do I just take out what I need for 10 months? <laughs> but I, and I did, I thought, you know what? It's not about that. It's about creating that sense of home that no matter where we are in, in it's full, you know, and it was good for the family and good for the kids. Cause if I was always temporary, they'd be temporary. And, you know, I wanted them to kind of get into the town and into the culture and the, and the community as quickly as possible. So they could have that great, like just that settled experience before we'd have to move again. Otherwise they just mm -hmm. were always in that, well, I'm not going to make friends because I'm just going to leave them. Right. <laughs> that kind of my yep. <laughs> why start the sports team when I'm going to have to leave halfway through. And even for us, you know, why make all these great friends? And then, you know, we're leaving, but I don't know about you, but I have some of the, my dearest, closest friends are friends we made during our military moves. I mean, I just, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure. And you're still doing it and you're still doing it. Cause how many times have you moved? I think more than I can count <laughs> because even though you're one uh, base or, you know, one command, we moved more than once. Mm -hmm. So in seven years, we moved, I want to say six times. Wow. Because you went from townhouse to, in the Middle East, we moved two times because mm -hmm. of the neighborhood we're at. It's okay. We, it's time to move. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so, so it happens. Sometimes uh, yeah. you're not expecting, but if you have to move, you have to move. Yeah. I, I don't know if you are like us, but there are things that we don't use often or you rarely use that we don't unpack. Right. It's down in the basement, totes, but things because like you're all in the mentality that, okay, we still have mm -hmm. a few years until we retire. Yeah, we, we might need, need this. Are yeah. you going to unpack? 
well, especially I'm, with us not having kids. <laughs> I can, I can tell yeah. you, I we did all our moves, and he retired. My husband retired from, from army after 23 years, and we did a huge clean out from our last house to like our final house where we live now, or kind of our last you know PCS move we had. Not really PCS, just government move to retirement. Um, we got rid of so much stuff. And we had actually lived in our house here in Fort Hood um, for like 11 years because he kept deploying. He got caught in this like Iraq cycle. And so we were able to have like amazing stabilization, but you know, also <laughs> accumulation <laughs> that we weren't used to. Um, and we moved so much. And I'll tell you, we've been in our home for five years and there are still boxes in my garage that I have not unpacked. And I'm like, I, I believe you. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, I know this is not how this is supposed to work. So I'm like, I'm, I told him, I said, this year, I said, we, first of all, I want to put my car in the garage. And if we have not opened this box since we have moved here five years ago, clearly we're not missing it or we've already replaced it because we couldn't find it. So I hope to have another, <laughs> another big purge. I don't think that ever, ever stops, but um. I'm, I, I've had so much fun with you. Um, you are just, oh my gosh, you are so resourceful and so, so knowledgeable. And I hope um, in this experience and sharing you um, and everything you know that we're able to make you a really, really great connection for people who are PCS in Virginia. Um, and, and we're gonna make sure that we've, you know, they're gonna have all your contact information and how to follow you and how to get in touch with you. Um, so I do, just, I really enjoyed our time and I hope we have the chance to talk again. Um, and I hope we have the chance to meet maybe one day other than, absolutely, uh, other than, other than through zoom, but any last and final words you'd like to share with the audience before we go. I think the same thing I said in the beginning, it's a stressful for everybody. Allow yourself to feel what you're feeling because before getting to this military life, before I was a military spouse, I used to, you know, hold my feelings inside myself. I wouldn't share my feelings and I would suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. But again, you're a human being, so allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. We right. all go through this, especially us in this community that knows how military, PCS, all this stuff works. We're, we feel what you're feeling. Just don't be hard on yourself. It's yeah. okay if you have to cry, cry if you need to call someone. And if you want to call me and cry or laugh or just yeah. talk about anything, does it have to be real estate? I'm I'm always here. I'm I'm super open with everything. So I love that. I love that. Well, thank you again so much for your time. I just I enjoyed getting to know you before this, getting to know you even more on this call. And so I just encourage anybody who's moving soon because y'all are getting ready to move yourselves <laughs> to to get in touch with you and you know, get themselves situated in Virginia with you um, during this next duty station and I wish you the best of luck on your next PCS maybe once you get situated where we're going we'll have you back on and you can share maybe some new tips or an experience that you had that you might want to share with us again yes it will be my pleasure all right thank you thank so you much for inviting I your time. <laughs> thanks Thank you.